Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Minolta Hymatic S. It was introduced in 1978. There were four different versions of this. The S, this one, the SD uh, with a date stamping, uh, then an S2 and an SD2. Uh, it wasn't around for too long because the uh, autofocus, the AF, version of this came out in 1979. It's zone focus. It's got the five icons on the barrel from a dot, a head, head and shoulders group, mountain, and it also shows those icons on the left in the viewfinder with a little needle showing you uh, which zone it's focused on. Um, the uh, dot is 2.8 feet and then obviously the mountain is infinity so that's your focus range on this guy the uh, viewfinder has a red led i think it's an led uh, that is your low light warning anytime the uh, the sensor circuit determines that it's going to be 1 45th of a second or slower warns you to pop up the flash or use a tripod uh, if it's going for a long shutter speed, you have to hold the shutter until the light goes out. If you just press and release, it's almost like a Lomo LCA in that respect. Um, it won't time out and close it. It'll just close it as soon as you let it go so you can severely underexpose. Um, that same light, and it's uh, copied on to the top, and I think you can probably see it in there. When it's pulsing like that, um, it means that the flash circuit is charged and you're ready to fire. Uh, the flash, it's not bad for a little uh, point and shoot jobber. It's guide number 14 meters at ISO 100. Um, anytime uh, you're using the flash, it sets the shutter to 1 30th of a second. The flash and the metering circuit are powered by two AA batteries, so that's convenient. You can pick those things up anywhere in the world. Uh, it has a pretty nice lens for a little point and shoot. It's a Rokor 38mm uh, f2.7 lens. It's four elements in three groups. It has a Seiko leaf shutter, and it's in between some of the lens elements. You can see in the back, well, I can show you here because I don't have film loaded. There's a lens element, nothing on the focal plane, so it's in between the lenses. Uh, that shutter goes from a quarter of a second to one four hundred fiftieth of a second. I've read a couple places online that says this will hold longer than a quarter of a second in low light. I don't know, that's what the manual says. I did manage to find it. Uh, the SD version is on uh, Mike Butkus's site. Uh, it's got a cadmium sulfide sensor. It's inside the filter ring, so that's nice. You don't have to compensate for a filter. Uh, it's a 46 millimeter filters. So really, this thing is picking the shutter and the aperture. The only compensation you can do is by monkeying with the film speeds. It's settable from ISO 25 to 400. Um, and it does have dots in between if you're using uh, something that's, you know, not like 100, 200, 400 film speeds. It's got dots for third stop steps, so if you are doing uh, compensation using that, you can get pretty accurate. Um, there's no self-timer. The date imprinting version, the SD, has that. Um, a cool feature. This little window right here, it's a safe load indicator. It's got a little orange stripe that'll move across as the film advances. That way you know you got your uh, film loaded correctly. Um, on the bottom, it's got uh, a metal tripod socket. That's kind of nice. And it's got the rewind release. And also the rewind knob is on the bottom. So it's pretty well laid out. I still suck at zone focusing, but this is a nice camera. I shot with it a couple of years ago. I need to find my prints from that session. So I've had this guy for a while, and this is probably the third time I've taken it out, first time I've featured it. I'll see you then.